ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between uh, welcome to listen to feminist uh, listen to feminist palestinian voices brought to you by femina ewid and general coalition, uh, coalition of women human rights defenders today we will listen to strong voices from palestine voices of fierce feminists before we start we would like to extend our solidarity and support and recognition of the feminist revolution in Iran and that feminist struggle anywhere in the world is bound to, to stand strong and also recognize the bravery and courages of young women, women human rights defenders and feminists who sacrifice their, their lives for women's freedom in Iran and everywhere else. Allow me to welcome in this session four amazing speakers. Welcome with me, Rasha Sansur, who holds a master's degree in communication and development from Ohio University with a background in journalism and, soci uh, and sociology. She has extensive experience in communications and resource mobilization. Her work includes this dissecting the sector's language to become more accurate and representative. She also uses her skills to influence positive social change in Palestine and works on shifting the negative narrative often associated with Palestine and Palestinians. She recently joined Visualizing Palestine as the outreach specialist. Also glad to have with us today, Shireen Abu, Fanuna, a human rights defender and international expert on justice and rule of law issues. She works in and on different countries, including Palestine, Iran, Tunisia, Mali, and currently based in Sudan. She is the daughter of Shada Aude, the health and gender expert who spent about a year in prison. Also welcome with me, Sahar Francis, a Palestinian human rights lawyer with over 25 years of experience in international humanitarian law and international human rights law and international criminal law. She is the director of Damir Prisoner Support and Human Rights Association, was sitting as a board member in defense of children, Palestine for four years specialized in rights of detainees and prisoners, and including children and women. With us also today, Rafah Anbtawi holds a bachelor's degree in social work from the Hebrew University and master's degree in labor from the University of Haifa. She has been working since 2013 on women's and society issues. And with you today, I'm moderating the session Zia Saeed, a journalist and trainer from Bahrain. And we will be with, with all of you uh, today listening to these speakers. And also, um, maybe we're going to uh, take some questions at the end. We will start the conversation with a question to all my guests to tell us about the human rights situation and the state of uh, repression against women, human rights defenders, and journalists. Can we start with you, Sahar? Hello, good evening, and, and thank you a lot, Naziha, for this introduction, and thanks to Oed, actually, for this opportunity in this special day, although it was a very sad day in Palestine with four martyrs uh, today. Uh, as a lawyer working with prisoners for the last 25 years, almost, I would focus more on the experience of the female prisoners actually and the attack against uh, female prisoners. In total, there's still 4,700 Palestinian prisoners inside the Israeli prisons. Out of them, currently there's 33 uh, women in detention. Three of them, they are under administrative detention without a trial, without uh, any based on secret information. Some of them, they are sentenced for long sentences and some they are just awaiting 
their trail. But in our context in the Palestinian occupied territories, the, the imprisonment were used as a tool by the hands of the occupation all these years to oppress and to maintain actually the, the occupation and the apartheid and the colonialist regime over the society. And the women were affected especially because anyway, they are vulnerable more than the other groups in the society. And they were facing the same policies of torture, ill-treatment, harassment, intimidation in the process of the arrest. But in the last couple of years, we can say that there is an increase in attacking politically female leaders, uh, uh, um, uh, human rights defenders, and students and journalists as women activists in our society. So like the arrest of uh, 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 Ms. Shada Audi uh, last year was in the context of attacking Palestinian civil society organizations, criminalizing the work of the human rights organizations, uh, declaring them as terrorist uh, organizations and then arresting the personnel, Shada as the director, but her colleague, Khwani Rishmawi, as the fundraiser was also arrested. Khitam uh, Saafin, the director of the Women Union, was arrested under administrative detention almost a year before the arrest of Khwani and Shada. Khalida Jarrar, the Palestinian Legislative Council member, was arrested several times in the last five years, around uh, three times uh, uh, under administrative detention and also prosecuted for being a political representative uh, for her community elected in the Palestinian Legislative Council uh, uh, and paying a very high price. The students in Birzeit University in, uh, since 2019 are facing a um, systematic attack especially women active in, in the student movement. Uh, more than five female students were arrested, tortured, some of them, and prosecuted for being students members in their uh, student uh, uh, groups active in the university and on incitement because they dared to share any post in their Facebook, Twitter, or any social media platform. Uh, so actually the Israeli occupation uh, is using the military court system with the military orders, with the international part of the international humanitarian law, uh, part of the humanitarian aspects of the Geneva Convention, any way that it protects its interest in maintaining this occupation and oppressing the Palestinian people. And this is why we uh, uh, report and document such increase in the attack against the whole society, especially against human rights uh, defenders. The conditions of the imprisonment in the prison are very uh, difficult conditions. Uh, Ms. Shada and uh, Khwani and Khitam were arrested under the uh, corona uh, uh, restrictions period. So they were banned from family visits. Uh, uh, health conditions were uh, uh, concerning a lot under such uh, regulations. Uh, there is a systematic punishment system that is implemented on the uh, prisoners, but especially it's, it would be more difficult for women because of their special needs, like the special health treatment that they don't get inside the prison, the solitary confinement uh, uh, policies that is implemented especially when there's a psychological, social problem and one of the female prisoners cannot cope with living under such difficult conditions, instead of offering a proper treatment, she would be sent for solitary confinement, uh, which, which will affect uh, uh, badly her uh, situation. Punishments can include as well ban from buying your stuff from the canteen, uh, not getting the books, or the family, the regular family visits. It could include as well high fines. Uh, um, currently, all the female prisoners are held in one prison that was supposed to be shut down by the decision of the High Court ten years ago. But instead of shutting down the uh, uh, facility, they claimed that they reconstructed it 
and they are still keeping the uh, women section and one child section in very bad uh, conditions. It's very humid, it's uh, unhealthy, and it's affecting all those that they are spending long years in uh, detention. Focusing on um, uh, what happened in the attack against the civil society organizations, especially against the women uh, uh, sector. Like last year in 2021, the Israeli Minister of Security declared seven Palestinian organizations as uh, terrorist uh, groups, and uh, uh, they uh, closed and tried to force closing all the offices. But especially our colleagues, the Women Union uh, Organization that deals with uh, very sensitive cases of uh, 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 violence against women and uh, 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 all related issues. Their office was raided as well uh, this year as the other offices, but their files were confiscated, the files that includes the sensitive information about these family issues and gender violence, uh, domestic uh, violence against women, and it could be manipulated by the uh, occupation authorities in order to put pressure against these women that now their information is in the hands of the uh, occupation forces. They confiscated all of the property of the organization. They literally took the chairs, the tables from the office. They uh, left the office uh, empty where they were aware that the organization is focusing in one of the most sensitive issues in our society, the vulnerable uh, uh, women in the rural area, especially in area C in villages that very difficult for the other services offered by the Palestinian Authority to reach these areas and the civil society organizations are filling these gaps. But yeah, all, I yeah, I will just summarize at the end that uh, uh, journalists, uh, uh, currently, there's two uh, Palestinian jour female journalists under administrative detention. So even for writing and, and, and uh, reflecting your opinion in supporting your people struggling against this apartheid uh, colonialist regime, you would be arrested under administrative detention for indefinite uh, uh, period in the same uh, conditions. And this is how they are weaponizing the, the law and the uh, 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 military orders against the female prisoners and the whole society. Thank you. Thank you, Sahab. Thank you so much for giving us all these insights from the situation of prisoners and, and especially uh, you focused on the women's sector. Uh, we will go from there to Shireen to talk to us a little bit more about the situation of her mother and how, how was this struggle actually as a family, uh, as also, how do you see it from a feminist perspective, Shireen? Um, thank you, Naziha. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so with regards to my mom's case, because uh, Saha generously basically took us through the detention conditions, so I'm going to just focus on my mom's case experience uh, of uh, being imprisoned for a year and what we had to go through as a family. Um, just to give you a brief background, my mom is one of the leading Palestinian feminists and uh, human rights defender working to promote the right to health and reproductive health in Palestine. She's a nurse by profession and served as the director of the health work committees where she tirelessly worked, uh, especially during COVID-19 pandemic, to provide health services for Palestinians across the West, the West Bank, especially in remote areas in Palestine. Uh, on 7 July 2021, around 2 a.m. in the morning, uh, about 15 Israeli soldiers raided our home in Ramallah, forcibly detaining my mom and terrorizing the family. The Israeli soldiers confiscated her mobile phone, seized the keys of the organization's car and confiscated the car itself. Uh, my mom uh, was asked to bring her medication with her, but was not allowed to bring them in a bag, which resulted in her forgetting one of the eight medicines that she takes on a daily basis. My mom had serious health conditions. Uh, she's diabetic. She has high blood pressure and other things. And at the time of her arrest, my mom was 60 years old. So by the time she was released, she was 61. Uh, um, just to, to tell you more, um, 
for the first 20 days, my mom was held in Hasharon detention facility outside the Palestinian occupied territory in uh, violation of international law with limited access to her lawyers and no access to her family. During this period, she lost nine kilos of her weight. She was denied access to her reading glasses and to one of her daily medications. On 15 July and only after several medical reports had been sent to the clinic of the detention facility, my mom finally received all her medications. And uh, during the, this time, she was kept in a cell where she had no pillows. Uh, so she used to use the cover of the bed as the pillow, uh, as the pillow and the jacket that she was wearing when uh, she was detained, she used to use it as a cover because the cell where she was kept, it had 24 hour surveillance. Um, during these 20, I'm talking about the first 20 days, she had four court hearings at Ofer military camp near Ramallah. And every time she showed up to these hearings wearing the same clothes as she had the night of her arrest, she was very uncomfortable. Uh, the detention facility was uh, one hour and a half away from Ofer, but my mom had to go through a trip of 24 hours with shackled dress and feet for usually a 10 minute hearing. And my mom and other detainees were always kept in metal rooms inside the bus and also once at offer camp. She used to, because it was during the summer, so she described them as a hellish sauna. Um, since I was, I was working abroad, I'm always working abroad, but uh, when she was arrested, I was abroad. And the last time I actually saw my mom before her arrest was in November, 2020. And the first time I saw her was on her second hearing on 14 July, she was brought to the hearing in shackles on her wrists and feet. So it was a very shocking scene for me. And the hearing was exactly seven minutes and I wasn't allowed to hold her hand or kiss her or anything. She, he was charged with five sentences. Uh, five charges were brought uh, against her and they were all related to her civil work at the health work committees. Um, I don't wanna go through the details of it. I wanted to move to something else. Uh, but basically on the 27th of July, my mom was transferred to the Moon Female Prison that is uh, uh, basically where family members cannot visit without permits issued by the Israeli authorities. And during her arrest, many scheduled family visits had to be canceled as uh, the Israeli prison authorities were rehabilitating the prison without providing further information on when family visits were resumed. And also please note that the family visits were only allowed for two family members once per month and only for 45 minutes. So we had to do a journey of 12 hours almost to get to see uh, like our, our beloved ones behind bars for 40 my, uh, 45 minutes. And when we visited, our interaction was from behind the glass and over the phone. We couldn't be physically close to her. There were also no phones in prison. So the only way for families to deliver news to the prisoners is through radio programs, or we used to receive our responses uh, back from my mom through lawyers that visited her or from letters that she managed to, to let them out with the free uh, prisoners. The hearings themselves, they are horrible. They used to be in Hebrew, a language that neither my mom nor the family members understood. And this is common for all the prisoners. There was very poor translation into Arabic and the hearings usually did not last more than 10 minutes. Also, only one family member was allowed inside the courtroom under the pretext of COVID-19, though the courtroom was usually full of officers, lawyers, and other attendees. And the other issue that I wanted to highlight is that there were repeated requests by my mom's legal team. Uh, the, the prosecution did not disclose all the evidence they claimed to have against her. And this caused substantial delay in the proceedings. Uh, and many court hearings had to be rescheduled to enable all parties to exchange and review the necessary documents. Such delays, uh, like the repeated postponement of her hearings, were used strategically to extend the duration of her imprisonment. My last point, and this is what I wanted to end with, is that ironically, on International Nursing Day, 12 May 12, uh, 2022, my mom was finally sentenced to 16 months of imprisonment, 
dollars fine and five years of suspended sentence on the condition of not working with health committees, with health work committees, or any similar organization. And a suspended sentence means that within the five years she could be jailed again for three months if she provided any assistance to health work committees or jailed for a year if she became a member of a political party. And the reason I say finally sentences because the Israeli military justice system is far from justice or providing Palestinians with basic fair trial safeguards. The conviction rate against Palestinians by military court is over 90%. My mom could have waited for years before a decision in her case could have been made. And so like many Palestinians, she accepted a plea deal to ensure her conviction and eventual release. My mom was indeed released on 3 June 2022 with the hope that all Palestinian prisoners are freed and reunited with their families very soon. Thank you, Naziha. Thank you so much, Shireen, for giving us all these details about your mother's case. And your mother's case uh, uh, is just an example of one, uh, like, of, of many, uh, many stories and many cases that have been facing the same struggles and the same um, kind of challenges that the occupation have been put there. On this day, the Solidarity Day with the Palestinian people, we are here to, to shed light on, on specifically the cases of women, the, the feminist um, movement inside the country. And we wanted to uh, to uh, give give this session to as a support, as an exposure to everything that's happening inside um, inside Palestine by the Palestinian people. Uh, I would like to to move to the next question, which is, we would like to know more about the feminist movement uh, uh, states or, and um, and some wins of the feminist movement. Maybe um, can I direct that question to you, Rafa? I think whoever wants to, um, uh, Rafa is going to speak in Arabic. Uh, thank you, Naziha. Uh, but can thank you, you Naziha. the question, please? Sorry, I started to speak in English. I will move to Arabic. Uh, so the question is, uh, we would like uh, to know more about uh, the uh, uh, the feminist movement in Palestine and uh, some of the uh, and uh, could you share with us some wins or success stories from your movements? Okay. Um, thank you first for this uh, uh, webinar and thank you for inviting us to take part. Um, I somehow I... this webinar. And thank you for, uh, with, uh, in fact, uh, solidarity with the Palestinian people is very important. Uh, and uh, whether in Palestine, historic Palestine, or any other uh, place, because uh, usually dealing with the Palestinian people and the uh, Palestinian territory is uh, one of the policies of the uh, occupying, uh, occupying uh, Israeli occupation forces and that is the disintegration of Palestine and uh, I believe this is also part of uh, this is an integral part of our uh, life as women Palestinian women we are uh, living and we are still holding to the uh, 1948 uh, uh, convention and uh, we are part of the uh, the uh, Palestinian minorities uh, who remained uh, in the country and uh, we are still struggling uh, and uh, we feel that uh, we are uh, uh, we are an integral part of the Palestinian people uh, wherever they are in the world and uh, what uh, you've said uh, it in fact it is anything that uh, we want to say whether uh, related in the interior uh, or the uh, occupied territory and how to deal with the Pal Palestinian cause and the uh, uh, women uh, Palestinian cause in particular is uh, affected uh, uh, directly by the occupation and uh, it is also uh, uh, and the uh, consequences of 
the occupation and uh, also its impact on the uh, Palestinian causes and the Palestinian citizens. Because uh, when we talk about uh, uh, apartheid policies, uh, and uh, so here we are talking about an apartheid system, and maybe also this uh, this uh, uh, does not really uh, is not uh, sufficient because we are suffering whenever we go. When we talk about the Palestinian women, we are a part of this uh, political system. However, we are also a part of a very complex uh, political and social uh, reality. And uh, we are also part of a patriarchal uh, system that is uh, violating uh, women's rights and discriminating against uh, women and violating uh, their rights. And we, as uh, Palestinian women, uh, we ought to struggle at the social level in order to free ourselves from the patriarchal uh, authority and in in order to uh, to get our rights uh, that are our basic rights first in our homes and with our families uh, and our village and and the schools and universities and on the other hand and in parallel and since we can't uh, we can't make a a, a, um, a difference so we need also to struggle in order to achieve our rights as citizens in the state and uh, and uh, for the uh, for the uh, liberation of the Palestinian people from occupation, and this makes the issue more complex. But what is more important is to understand the situation. And we talk about a feminist movement or challenges faced by Palestinian women as individuals or groups or uh, associations, we can't see the situation on the ground without seeing this social and political context that affects the identity of each one of us and uh, affects also our way to develop uh, struggle mechanisms against the uh, occupation and against the apartheid whether that is exercised whether by the uh, Israeli occupation and also by our society and this makes our cause more complex because we as a feminist we say that we can't really make any difference between the social and the national because I believe, and this is my theory, that making uh, the, uh, this separation between uh, all these issues uh, constitutes one of uh, the uh, problems, and uh, this uh, hinders us from making any um, any um, any development or any success. Because here we're talking about uh, a a uh, community where women are marginalized and women are just attached to their families and to their fathers and the brothers and husbands and in a situation where palestinians and the uh, the uh, 1948 territory where 70 percent of the of women cannot work outside their houses and uh, do not uh, gain any salary and here we're talking also um, also uh, about uh, an increase uh, of uh, uh, violent women, whether the domestic women, economic violence, domestic violence, and the, the increase in the rate of crimes against women in all historic Palestinian territory. And all these information are unfortunately uh, transnational, uh, uh, whether and these transcend all borders, uh, whether uh, geographic or economic or social borders. And uh, all this uh, is uh, uh, under a system, a prevalent system, a prevalent system. And uh, here, whether we're talking about the authority or the institutions that are supposed to uh, provide security and safety and the protection and uh, help citizens uh, to achieve and to gain their rights. And this also includes uh, all uh, uh, the territory. And unfortunately, here we're talking about patriarchal systems and uh, systems, uh, political systems uh, that uh, have uh, an interest uh, to keep women in this uh, bubble and uh, in this uh, under this oppression. And uh, this is what we are fighting every day because uh, 
uh, we, uh, a, a society will be strong only if women are strong and are liberated and a, a, a society cannot be liberated from occupation if women remain under the uh, men and male occupation. So if we want to give you examples about what we do every day as uh, Kayan, we are are a Palestinian feminist uh, association based in Haifa, and our work is not only limited to the to Palestine, but we um, the interior Palestine, uh, believing uh, that we need to uh, struggle in solidarity. And one of the examples that we have uh, lately de developed uh, is uh, the creation of a, a female coalition that uh, includes uh, 25 uh, associations uh, from all regions uh, and uh, that uh, works towards uh, combating uh, social uh, violence in the uh, political context that we've talked about and the context of occupation. And uh, we've been working at this level and uh, all levels. However, we face a lot of uh, challenges and we see that uh, there are a lot, a lot of setbacks at the social level because apartheid and discrimination increase from uh, the state. And uh, also it is very clear towards the associations and even inside the country, there is a lot of uh, clap down on uh, clamp down on the uh, feminist associations, especially those associations uh, who work on all issues related to Palestinians, whether the Nakba or the return. And here we are trying to raise awareness among women, political awareness, and increase the participation of women. So here we have a comp comprehensive woman a project related to the Nakba or revolution and the return of uh, the uh, um, and uh, in the uh, last year there uh, the clampdown has uh, increased uh, from the as uh, the uh, government and their institutions as uh, for all uh, uh, activism and uh, activity منهج في بدل معالجه العنف مع حالات قتل بالمجتمع Uh, among uh, the uh, Jewish women, and if a Jewish woman was killed, they directly arrest the killer. While uh, if a Palestinian woman was killed, you never see any um, uh, arrest of any uh, criminal. And we also see that the women have uh, sent complaints and have notified the violent they are facing, but unfortunately, the uh, Israeli police does not deal with these complaints seriously. And especially if uh, the cases are related to the Palestinian community and Palestinian women. So our movements, um, or in our movement, so we know that there's no hope to affect the policies of the state, but our aim is to try to build our communities by developing the uh, feminist capacities, uh, the uh, youth capacities in order for them to become active at the community and uh, uh, policy levels and to strengthen our capacities as a community in general, because otherwise no one uh, wants uh, women to be stronger, uh, whether the community or the state or the occupation of forces. And this is what we were able to uh, understand lately. And for this reason, we invest uh, more in direct uh, uh, activities with the people. 
by developing uh, community-based uh, uh, activities and a field or a sustainable field of work. And uh, like overview over the feminist um, uh, movement in, in Palestine and the, the historical uh, uh, Palestine. Um, there is some wins that the, the movement uh, have um, have achieved. Uh, I will I will go to you, Russia, to talk a little bit about these wins that the feminist movement did in the last few years. Uh, thank you, Naziha. Uh, something that really comes to my mind as a win, very prominent win, is the um, local grass, grassroots uh, uh, movement, feminist movement uh, under uh, named Talat. Um, it has uh, mobilized uh, the, the local community uh, uh, during, um, after the death of uh, Isra uh, Abu Garbiye uh, in 2019, 2019, I believe. And uh, there was a huge popular support uh, from at the local level to voice out this, um, the, the, to, to, to to make to to uh, discuss the, uh, at the local level this uh, situation on the ground and to bring uh, to to the the national national uh, I'm sorry one moment <laughs> hope you're okay Russia all good Yes, I was a little distracted, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, yes, so I was saying about the Talat movement, especially after the unity intifada in 2021, after the attacks on Gaza, we saw this uh, huge uh, movement in Palestine, especially that it was a feminist movement that uh, refused to accept the fragmentation of the Palestinian society. As Rafah said, we are all Palestine and Palestinians and we refuse the, uh, the borders that are imposed on us by the Israeli occupation. So uh, Palestinians uh, all over, especially the youth movement with a feminist lens, uh, they, they became, um, they went under this banner that uh, there is no um, there is no free Palestine without free women. There is no free Palestine with, without ending the, the occupation and uh, without ending this apartheid Zionist regime. So uh, this is the, uh, the, the I believe the win for the uh, feminist movement in Palestine that uh, that has uh, really impacted. The, the narrative, because a lot of the times we don't hear, we hear an Orientalist narrative about uh, the feminist uh, Arab movement. So having this uh, exposure and uh, diversity is uh, really important, and I consider it a woman. Thank you, Rasha. And uh, as, as Ra Rafa as well mentioned that uh, intersectionality is, is the key, like we have to work as a feminist movement all around the world, in Palestine, everywhere else, intersectional. We have to, like the, the national um, causes and the fights against occupation or against patriarchal uh, system or against um, uh, unjust laws all goes together. There is no uh, priority. Um, there is no case that comes as a priority um, upon the others. Uh, from there, I would like to uh, to focus or like to, to ask about what does global feminist solidarity means to, to all of you? Like we are here today, we are celebrating the day of solidarity with the Palestinian people. And it's also the international day for women and human rights defenders. And we are here to show this solidarity to show that the feminist uh, movement is supporting the Palestinian women movement. Uh, what does that mean to you? I will maybe go from you, Russia, and further to the other um, 
to my other guests. Yes, I will personally speak from my experience to, uh, and exposure to other movements uh, in the world, uh, feminist movements. So um, I took part in multiple uh, organizations and networks, and I can see that on the ground there is this there is this uh, sense of um, solidarity and. Uh, this uh, common ground that feminist movements around the world um, agree on. So uh, I've been part of uh, networks where I have seen uh, how whenever one uh, organization or one women fund uh, works with their women at the, such a local level, you see that the same processes are always about the woman first. It should be about uh, putting her at the decision-making uh, place and empowering her, not in this traditional, uh, like, you know, development language meaning of empowerment. It's empowerment that actually is different. It's uh, something where she feels ownership in the decisions she's making. So uh, I'm seeing this uh, across all movements uh, and women funds, and it's, similarly reflected to the Palestinian movement. And a lot of that is, um, is showing and it's gaining narrative and it's gaining ground. So um, many of these feminist movements also extend their solidarity against the occupation. And they believe that if you want to be a feminist, you also have to uh, uh, cancel out all oppression, all forms of oppressions around the world. And this includes the occupation and the Zionist regime, the apartheid Zionist regime. So this is how it uh, is reflected, even beyond feminist movements, such as the Black Lives Matter movement or other, other movements that really, other social movements like the climate justice movements that uh, affect actually affects uh, women mostly because women are, for example, the uh, uh, small scale farmers uh, in, in, uh, in some uh, in countries, especially indigenous women. So all I'm trying to say is that this solidarity and intersectionality shouldn't be um, centered in through a feminist lens only. It should be intersectional and uh, looking at this achieving human rights at all levels. Thank you, Rasha. Shall I move to you, Rafa? With the same question, what does the international solidarity, like feminist solidarity movement means to you? Um, I think, I think that I remember when I am asked this question, or the first thing I remember when I ask when I am asked this question, is the importance of not dividing solidarity. Solidarity has to be comprehensive, and Russia has discussed the issue. The Palestinian women inside the Palestine feel or think about this division or separation between the leftists and the rightists. Uh, um, and we see a lot of feminists uh, consider themselves as different from others. Uh, we see, for instance, feminists living in settlements. And at the same time, they have solidarity with the Palestinian people. How can this uh, uh, be possible? This is in general. But if we speak specifically, I think about solidarity or feminist solidarity. When I think of a situation that overcomes uh, women uh, only, when I um, show solidarity to Palestinian uh, uh, women, I do not only want to show solidarity when Palestinian women are killed by Palestinian men. I also want to see solidarity when the Israeli government, for instance, and when the apartheid uh, system violates uh, the rights of uh, women and uh, human rights defenders and shuts down uh, associations. And I also want to feel solidarity when I uh, call for my civil rights and for my uh, human rights. 
So for me, solidarity is more comprehensive. It is a solidarity that deals with all the issues and that cannot be possible without uh, uh, also taking account or uh, having solidarity against this occupation, this apartheid the occupation. And not only related to the Palestinians in the specific regions, but of course, so there are popular movements that are becoming stronger, but uh, there is always a gap between the peoples and the governments. Why do we always feel that peoples are uh, show more solidarity uh, while the policies that come out from the governments are deteriorating and are becoming uh, more uh, um, uh, not supportive of the Palestinian people? And this is in general my idea. Thank you, Sahar. We uh, get back to you. Put it more in a legal context. This is means accountability. We cannot reach justice without ensuring accountability. And accountability means that perpetrators of serious violations of human rights should be criminalized, prosecuted, and found accountable for their crimes, war crimes and crimes against humanity. And in the Palestinian context, it's the most serious problem why we are not feeling protected, why we cannot uh, uh, go further. And it's not just the Palestinian problem, because if we wanna take what, what women generally face in, in, in the globe, and the hypocrisy of the governments in respecting human rights and why in Iran, in, 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 in other contexts, uh, in, in uh, Palestine, in uh, Latin America, in the United States and everywhere, because there's no serious commitment to these international standards of the women uh, uh, rights and how we enforce this. If the UN system is failing to protect these main rights that they were legalizing and putting in place because of political lack of political will and political hypocrisy, we the people should take the lead through this network, these networks and joining efforts. And I think what we can learn from the Palestinian example is the boycott, divestment and sanctions because boycott, divestment, and sanctions is not just correct for the Palestinian context. You can divest from any company and international corporation that is complicit with serious violations of human rights. If the state is not gonna punish this company because of such uh, 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 grave violations, we the people should take the lead and, and initiate such things. We should request sanctions over any state that don't respect international law and international rights are equal and should be implemented equally everywhere. And I think this is the powerful of the people joining efforts and supporting each others in our campaigns, in our, uh, uh, the solidarity means actions. And this is what we need to take lead in taking actions against the perpetrators. Thank you so much, Sahar. I would like to, to give the microphone to you, Shireen. Thank you. I'm going to talk now in Arabic because the issue is a little bit more difficult. I will now speak in Arabic now. As for solidarity, and the, when it comes to the, my mother's case, one of the things that I always remember whenever I uh, think of my mother's case, my sister and I had to uh, buy her things uh, she needs in prison. And this whole process was very difficult. We were lost. We were uh, learning uh, what does it mean to be a family that has an imprisoned individual, even in our daily life. And of course, uh, part of this was buying things for her and uh, taking them to prison. And I remember when I went to the prison for the first time, I had to uh, count the number of pants and the number of underwear uh, that I need to bring into the prison.
نروح نشتري من المحلات هاي الاواني باتنز نو So, so there were a lot of uh, very weird details concerning uh, the apparel or the clothes. And then uh, we had to explain to them that uh, we needed to buy clothes uh, uh, for my, for my uh, 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 mother who's in prison. And uh, everybody used to say, uh, to, tell, to encourage us and to tell and to wish that she would be released very soon. And uh, this uh, gave us real support. And uh, w the other thing that I wanted to comment on is uh, what Sahar was talking about. Uh, in fact, uh, the differences in uh, how uh, they deal with us as Palestinians, and especially uh, in the case of my mother, in fact, the people used to ask about the smallest details. And here I'm talking about the international solidarity. And sometimes uh, they asked questions, for example, about what did your mother do? So solidarity became as if uh, I want uh, I want to show solidarity because it is about uh, the right, uh, or, uh, but because we have uh, this uh, illegal and illegitimate uh, 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 occupation. So people wanted to really go into uh, the details uh, to just uh, uh, see whether solidarity was well placed or not. Well, in fact, there was a real international solidarity with my mother and a lot of people supported her and supported her association. However, a, a lot of people wanted to go into details and said, well, maybe I cannot uh, stand in solidarity with your mother for, uh, for certain uh, causes. So once again, I would like to thank, uh, thank you all uh, here because you really expressed better than myself, uh, better than me about uh, my mother's case. But I just wanted to really add this uh, personal touch. Shukran. Individuals with personal stories and we all make this movement happen all together. And with the intersectionality that we have been talking about for the whole hour now is uh, this is how we, could make change and could move forward and could also liberate our lands, our, our lives, our bodies and our um, and our fellow uh, women and our uh, the others who are in prison or, or in under occupation. I would like to thank you all, Rasha, Shireen, Rafah and Sahar for your inputs and for all the efforts that you are putting in this movement to liberate women and defeated the patriarchal system and also the occupation. If there is a questions from the, the audience, we still have like four minutes before we end up this hour. Um, we can, you can post it in the chat or in the Q and A and we are watching here. And, but if there is not, uh, I would like to end the session. And thank, thanks to everybody who's attending with us today and listening to these uh, uh, beautiful souls from uh, the occupied land of Palestine. I don't see any questions coming. And again, it's my honor to, to talk to all of you today. This webinar was brought to you by Femina, with and Regional Coalition of Women Human Rights Defenders. Thank you all for participating and the audience today who believes in our struggle as women to live in a safe environment uh, and defeating uh, occupation and patriarchal system. Again, this, this day uh, or this webinar was organized because um, on the day of solidarity with Palestinian people and the International Day for Women Human Rights Defenders. Shout out to all the Palestinian women who are fighting for their freedom from the occupation and the repression system and uh, the patriarchal system. To end, free Palestine. See you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.